Sensing the world of IoT. In a world full of objects connected to the internet, the sensor is the first point of interaction between the objects and their environment. Ranging from applications for smart homes, autonomous driving, wearables, etc., to smart farming, all use a network of sensor nodes capable of translating physical variables, temperature, light, etc., into electrical signals that are processed and transmitted to a cloud that shares the information. In the world of personal applications, miniaturization of electronics and wireless transmission makes it possible to place small, low cost, high performance sensors in every device in our pockets or wrist, while keeping the power consumption and costs low. At last, it is possible to develop wearable devices in digital health monitoring systems, and flexible or even biodegradable structures can be used to place sensors in the human body. Sensor nodes in other fields, oceanography, precision agriculture, etc., are extremely diverse but follow more or less the same architecture. A microcontroller receives digitalized information from sensors and transmits it wirelessly. In these sensor networks, the developer selects modules from those available in the manufacturer's catalog. These modules are then connected to or integrated into each sensor node according to the application. The emergence of low-cost open-source hardware platforms means everybody can build their own sensor nodes. For example, a developer can choose from the multitude of low-cost sensors available and connect the sensors he needs to Arduino. He, she can then program the sensor node and endow it with a wireless communication system to provide information to a processing cloud once it is inserted into the smart environment. Suppose, for example, that we wanted to make an environmental quality monitor node connected to the cloud. The variety of sensors offered by the different websites can make it difficult to choose the most appropriate. Let's learn the features we must look for. The first is evident in any catalogue. You look at what measurement variables you need, for example temperature, light, wind velocity, etc. Also, the price is easy to see at first glance. However, the type of output signal is not so easy to determine since the websites often mix together primary sensors which do not make their own electrical signal with complete modules that add the necessary electronic circuitry to the primary sensor to obtain an analog or digital output signal. Therefore, it is important to differentiate the types of electrical output signal to which the physical variable is translated. If the voltage output is on-off, it will directly offer a high or low digital state as a level detector switch of a deposit. The output could also be in the form of a digital pulse train, as in a rotary encoder, which provides the position or velocity of a robot axis. In a DC analog output signal, the voltage level varies in proportion to the measured physical magnitude. It may be converted to digital to be treated directly by a microcontroller. In this case, the minimum resolution, minimum representable value, should also be taken into account due to the analog to digital conversion, or transformed into one of the multitude serial communication protocols, I2C, SPI, one wire, etc., for remote data transmission. But how do we obtain an output signal from primary sensors, which do not make their own electrical signal? For instance, resistive sensors vary their electrical resistance with pressure, temperature, light, etc. A simple voltage divider provides an analog proportional output signal with great sensitivity to variations in resistance. This signal can be read directly by one of the analog inputs on the board. Despite their low cost and high sensitivity, most of them have a non-linear response which can give a poor measurement accuracy, although it can be improved by software. 
If we want to measure in small ranges or to get on-off outputs, for example, automatically turning on lights, they are the best choice because of their simplicity and low cost. To avoid these limitations, we can move on to more expensive primary sensors with greater linearity and a wider measuring range, for example in applications demanding high precision or very high temperature measurements. As their sensitivity is lower, you have to use more complex conditioning, usually including electronic amplifiers. Although we can build our own signal conditioning in a printed circuit board, reducing the cost of electronics makes available complete conditioning modules packaged as breakout boards, where tiny components with their own pins are connected on a printed circuit board with its own pins spaced properly. These boards can thus be easily mounted, for instance, in our environmental quality monitor node. In these modules, such as this thermocouple conditioner, we will find the same features that we mentioned previously. Measurement range, accuracy, minimum measurement resolution, output signal, in this case a digital serial protocol SPI. Although in this example the primary sensor thermocouple is not integrated into the board, we will find variety of breakout boards for as many variables in which the primary sensor is small in size and is integrated into the board along with any other necessary components. But not all breakout boards. Some simple packages could be identified as primary sensors, but they are really much more. For instance, a temperature sensor with analog output in a traditional TO92 package with relatively poor accuracy is enlarged with more components in another model with the same package. Besides improved accuracy, it includes an analog to digital converter to offer a one wire serial bus output. The same sensor can be found in modules for the traditional professional applications, in which the same sensor selection process, as we have already learned, is followed. Although in these applications it is logical to have special, much more robust and obviously more expensive products. These manufacturers also offer a multitude of boards and plug-and-play interchangeable sensor modes with lots of measurement variables where other parameters should be taken into account, involving not only the sensor, but the complete sensor node, such as A. Robustness, high IP B. Low consumption C. Easy to install, for which are essential 1. The modularity and encapsulation components 2. And rapid deployment D. An appropriate, communi an appropriate communication interface with the cloud software. To conclude, remember that when selecting sensors, you must have a thorough knowledge of them and their main characteristics. In this video tutorial, we have tried to give you a few ideas of what we believe are the most important aspects of sensors to encourage you to go deeper into this exciting world.